How many metal rinds do you think there are? Like, how many layers of metal? Just one, or? Well, yeah, you you probably you probably seen my uh, seismic wave video where I talk about um, my speculation I think that there are like... metal rinds based on what the the moho layer was all about, basically, and. Um, that was when they were detecting seismic waves and they were hitting this barrier and the refraction of the waves was was accelerating to a very significant amount which implied that it was going through a much much denser medium under, under the ground mm -hmm. and so if you understand, uh, understand that sound is going to actually uh, accelerate through a denser medium like metal um, that to me, mm -hmm. that makes no, it's not obvious. Um, I think, I think the metal rinds are playing a role with the celestial sphere, how it operates as well. Because when I worked at GE, I um, I worked in the detector engineering department and I helped engineers. I basically ran tests for them and stuff on CT machines, and they have this giant Faraday. Key. Age. It's like like 30 feet high, a football field wide. So they were testing the X-ray machine, and they couldn't figure out why it was making RF noise in a certain spectrum. Mm -hmm. I forget what frequency it was, but it turned out CT machines are balanced by weights. You have to balance each machine is slightly different, so you have to balance each side of it with weights it turned out metal plates with oil in between them wow are you kidding me no it was generating our that's exactly, noise that's exactly what i was saying i was saying there's a lubricant between these metal rinds it's either metal or it's got either it's either oil or water but yeah, there's some kind of lubricant yep and that's why i was saying that's why i believe that these rinds actually process over a long period of time that actually causes the north magnetic pole to move because I believe there's, there's these openings in the north and the south that actually is indicative by when you see the auroral zone so that obviously that's shifted over like 10 degrees and so wow that's, that's confirming right there amazing hi guys I'm going to try to explain the auroras how they work how they really work because obviously the earth is concave and there's glass in the sky and the glass acts like a vacuum tube like a vacuum chamber like a plasma ball that contains plasma in which solar, solar radiation is hitting the geomagnetic radiation of the earth I think the earth has a metal rind to it I think that this metal rind is slightly tilted. I believe. Let's put my lightweight program. The cutaway of it. I believe that the continental and the oceanic plates were formed over the metal rind over the water I believe there's there's a layer of water that's sandwiched in here and the scripture says in Job 26 that I stretched the north over the empty place I also believe that it was stretched over the south as well where this area is just plate it's there's no metal there so the continental plates the sedimentary rock was created by the water and so it's stretched over. I don't believe there's really any. I mean, there might be some little pinholes here and there in the north and the south, but I believe it's been covered over like that with water. Now, if you, um, if I grab the, the little lip here, the metal lip, you can see the auroral zone. Okay, it's also tilted, right? The magnetic north pole, the magnetic south pole, or the geomagnetic north pole and south pole—they're tilted. So they're not going to be 
exactly in line with the true north, the true geographic north, or the geographic south. It's going to be slightly, it's about nine, it's about 10 to 11 degrees. So let's just tilt it a little like that. So now you can understand why there's a difference, why the auroral zone it doesn't line up perfectly with the geographic north and south. And so this auroral zone, actually I tilted it the other way, it's probably, it's like over Canada. Let me quickly tilt that the other way. So it's tilted like that. It's also interesting that the poles are flat, right? Well, that would make sense. If it was stretched over with sedimentary rock that created the plates, there's no metal there. So, I mean, the, the poles of the earth are flat, right? So this auroral zone, okay, it's, it's just mimicking the opening of the metal rind. This is my theory. And um, this magnetism of the metal earth, the metal rind of the earth, and it's coming out from the north, it's going around the outside of the earth, and it's coming right back up, shooting back up north like that. There's declination within the earth, magnetic declination. That's like these vertical, semi-vertical lines going throughout the earth that um, are caused by a deviation of the vertical magnetic flux. So the continents, you know, there's stuff in the continents, whether it's metal or whether it's, it's changing the direction slightly of the magnetic deviation which wants to go perfectly vertical so the sunlight within the earth here's the sun's rays um, during the auroras the end of the sun's rays the sun is at the auroras happen like in in the cold in the winter time or getting close to the winter time so let me just tilt that sun a little bit down Like that. Bear with me. Bear with me. Tilt it down a little bit. Okay. Now, the end of the rays are going to interfere with the auroral zone, the magnetic activity coming up from the lips, from the metal lips of the rind of the earth. Okay, it's not the magnetosphere. The glass sky is causing the vacuum, creating the plasma, creating the nitrogen and the oxygen. And there's, just, there's just still a little bit, and it's not a complete vacuum, so there's still some nitrogen and oxygen above the glass, which is creating the striations, this interference, the solar wind, the end of the curved rays of the sun, interacting with the magnetic flux of the lips of the metallic rind of the earth. That's how I believe. So this metal, it's shifting, it's moving. It's not, it's, 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 it's the water that's sandwiched between or the oil that's sandwiched between is shifting. So you have the inside of the earth, heaven, it's, it's staying perfectly vertical. Okay, it's not shifting whatsoever, but this outer metal rind is over the years, okay, you know, every, you know, the magnetic north pole is moving very else well. So that's why I believe it's happening. That's how I believe the auroras are happening. Auroras happen in this state, within a vacuum, with glass. Glass acts as the insulation, the insulator. So it blocks all this, uh, all these rays, the solar radi radiation, and it creates, it creates these radiations like that. I don't let them tell you differently. Okay, seismic waves within the inverted hollow Earth. Now there's a uh, there's a version uh, by a man named Jan, whatever his name is, Lamprecht, <clears throat> where he gives an uh, he gives his own version of the hollow Earth, uh, how the seismic waves move. Actually, um, initially they proposed this model. Okay, you're looking at the Earth. You're standing on the Earth, which is convex, which they have it. It's not really convex. But anyway, they, um, there's basically there's a shadow zone at 105 degrees and uh, 140 degrees that virtually no seismic activity occurs there. However, uh, there is still a little bit of activity occurs there. Um, like if you look in this 
diagram of a solid convex Earth. Um, they have a 105 to 140 degrees where there's no seismic, seismic activity. Uh, you got the black lines and the red lines. The black lines are the P waves. The red lines are the S waves. The S waves are secondary. Black lines are primary. Uh, secondary waves don't travel through liquids or gases. They only travel through solids. There's a version of, okay, you got the P waves and the S waves. Um, problem is, okay, basically going back a little bit, there's a man named Moho Rivivikicic, seismic discontinuity. Basically in Croatia, early 1900s, he talked about uh, 35 kilometers below. There was a rapid acceleration in velocity at that level when they when there was an earthquake here in Croatia, basically. So um, he concluded that the material has to be denser. It has to be denser than basalt rock, basically, because basalt basalt rock, granite rock, has uh, densities of 2.6 to 3.0. Okay, so metals have a higher density. So basically, seismic activity, seismic waves can travel faster through metals. Especially, obviously, it passes through platinum or gold. So, um, going back here, I wanted to talk about a little bit about um, this discontinuity. They call it the moho or the mantle. Now, he's saying there's actually a, a line that separates the crust from the mantle, but I'm saying the moho, if you want to call it that, is the actual mantle. Okay, this is my version the inverted hollow earth. Okay. Okay, right here, I'm gonna zoom in over there. Right there is the epicenter. Let's say the epicenter of an earthquake happens right there, okay? You got, this is the continental, the granite plate. This is the basalt, the oceanic plate. I'm saying beneath that is the moho, the mantle. That's made out of metal. And then there's another layer of water. This is just speculation, but I, I believe that. This is kind of what I've concluded, basically. And then there's also metal rind. And there's possibly even more layers of metal beneath that. I mean, this is the outside of the earth. Okay, you think we are living in the inside of the earth. Okay, up in the middle is heaven. There's octahedral core. Where all the, and then you have inner space, you have the planets, you have the sun, the moon. Okay, so basically here, let me zoom out a little bit here. Okay, you have the epicenter of the earthquake and the red line would be the secondary wave. The yellow line would be the primary wave. I'm saying that if there's an occurrence here, it's going to generate both in both directions. Actually, I just have it going in one direction, but it's going to generate the seismic wave. The S waves and the P waves are going to be going through this solid metal very fast, very quickly. Okay, this is at the 105 degree shadow zone cutoff. So the red line abruptly stops because it's entering the liquid. Okay, if there's a liquid here. This is what I'm saying. I'm not sure, I'm just speculating. And the P wave continues on into the liquid, but it's too weak to reach the surface. So you still get some, se some seismic data within the shadow zone, but you don't get that much, basically. That's what I interpret, that's what they tell me, basically. So anyway, what's going on here, I believe, is that the P wave is continuing on into this liquid, and then it's beginning to reflect back, and curve around back. So basically, at the surface here, okay, here's the ocean, here's the land. When you're detecting seismic activity below, obviously the signal is getting weaker because it's getting further down, but you're still detecting it. Okay, once it enters, when it once it exits the mantle, the, the moho, and enters the liquid state, you can barely hear any seismic activity whatsoever in this shadow zone. Especially, you cannot hear any S waves. But the P waves continue on, and the P, P waves reverse back, and then they hit the other side of the Earth. So that is actually a biblical model too, as well, because if you look at Psalm 12, the words of the Lord are pure words, as silver tried in a furnace of earth purified seven times. Silver and earth and seven times. It's very interesting because Cyrus Teed, now a lot of people think he's a whack job, but actually he's a very, he was a very intelligent man. And Looking back in retrospect, I think he was a little bit too, uh, I don't know, he was just a little bit too, too, uh, too static, too uh, rigid in some of his term terminology, but he had it right. He said, okay, the universe is an agar shell obtaining, obtaining as a structure perpetually recreative and existent. It is limited by the environment of its shell, circum 
inferentially and by the astral nucleus centrally. Now, number three, its circumference has seven metallic layers of superimposed strata. Okay, so it's five mineral strata. Okay, so he's, I mean, he's basing this, I'm not sure if he's having divine revelation. He said he did actually, but um, I tend to believe, yeah, the earth has a metal rind to it. Earth also, also rings like a bell. Okay, so basically, you have this metal rind. If I can, I can even add the other layers too. If it, if it does have these other layers here, basically you have these layers, and they're sandwiched between. I think Cyrus T actually said there was like a mercurial solution in between them, but you know this is speculation. But this works. This works much better than um, any, any the solid Earth hypothesis as well as the the convex hollow earth hypothesis from Jan Lamprecht, basically saying that initially, okay, this is your initial version of the seismic activity on a convex planet that happens to be hollow in, in theory, basically. But they have the only, <clears throat> they only have the S&P waves going to it about 80 degrees. And so this is where they would need to go. And so they have to revise their model to create this much smaller interior, this much smaller hollow interior. And they have to say, well, okay, then the S waves are gradually speeding up as you get deeper and deeper as, as the material becomes more denser. And then it transitions and then it starts to shift and become less dense. So it slows down. Now this is all conjecture and theory. And it's just a ridiculous model because if you understand anything about information being suppressed and um, well, true nature i mean watch my other videos this is the true nature we are living inside the concave edge of the earth which is stationary um cyrus t performed a rectilinear experiment in 1897 and there's also the tamarack plumb by mine shaft experiments which showed that the mine sh the plumb bobs actually diverged at the bottom of the mine shaft so basically um, one thing that lampert does right is that he does a test that the shadow zone is not completely void of seismic activity as a solid earth this would lead you to believe and another thing about the solid earth is they have to figure out why the, the P waves are reaching the other side of the earth uh, a lot later than they should. And so basically they're saying that during a while, well, that's why they create this, this, I guess you would call that the uh, outer core. <laughs> but they're saying that there's higher elasticity there. It's not necessarily um, lower density. It's just all theory and conjecture and bullshit. Okay. Just understand that there is a metal outer edge to the earth. There's at least one metal outer edge to the earth. The Bible confirms that, Cyrus T confirms that, and seismic activity confirms it. Okay, these seismic waves are moving very fast through this medium, especially when it hits the so-called moho layer, the mantle, 35 to 50 kilometers. So that's, that's, that's the true nature of the universe. We are living inside it. So I don't think I've ever explained volcanoes in the concave earth in a video. I've done it in text, but I just want to do it really quickly. If you watch a previous video of mine, I uploaded a couple, actually a couple years ago, April 21st of 2013. I talked about seismic waves, uh, actually confirming a highly dense metal encased hollow rind to the concave earth and possibly concentric layers as well with water or oil sandwiched in between and so this whole thing is pressurized it's one big pressurized container that's what earth is and so um, this is what would be happening you would be getting higher pressure and higher temperature the further down you went and so there's a cutaway of the concave earth and as you can see here, the bottom of the oceanic or the continental plates is going to get extremely hot. And then there's this moho, they call it the moho uh, whatever his name is, layer. Um, it's about, actually it's 35 kilometers down. And so what they found out is that there is this highly dense layer at about 35 kilometers that actually causes the seismic waves to reflect back at a higher velocity. And so that's why they concluded that. And within the concave of Earth, that is my speculation, is that there is a metal layer that's 
housing the continental and the oceanic plates and because of the high pressure, because of the high temperature, that magma is melting and it's butting up against the highly dense layer and it has nowhere else to go so it creates these fissures in the actual plates and it seeks less pressure and since less pressure is only found in higher elevations it finds the highest elevation possible which would be the top of mountains and eventually it builds up to a point where it cannot contain it anymore and it explodes and that's how we get the volcano also do with pressure heat and the metal rind of the earth blocking the molten magma from actually going any further so there you go hi guys this is my version of the earth's magnetic field lines within the concave earth as opposed to a convex earth where they have a barb magnet in the middle i believe that the magnetic current or field lines are wrapping around the outer edge going in and out from the north and south. I believe there's actually openings in the north and south of the rind. Okay, I believe those openings are covered over with continental plates. I believe that's also why the, the poles of the earth are flattened because they don't have that outer metal covering. So you have these openings. This is a cutaway, obviously, I don't you know. But um, at the north and south, we have these openings and the, the magnetic flux is exiting out the north going around the outside and going, coming back in from the south. And these openings are offset. The rind is offset slightly. If you'll notice the auroral zone, it's like 10 degrees offset. It's not perfectly aligned with the geographic north and south poles. And I believe that this rind is processing slowly, shifting, because I believe that there's like layers within the earth, whether they be water or oil that's actually lubricating the outer rind to press us back and forth. I believe that's also why the magnetic north and south poles shift because of this processing effect. The magnetic north poles are not precisely in unison with the shift. I believe that's because of the different perturbations that are happening within the earth. But for the most part, I believe that this is like a rocking back and forth mechanism. We're never gonna have like a magnetic reversal, I don't believe, especially because the time is short. But um, this is how I, I believe it's operating. I believe the, the auroras are happening because of the Earth's magnetic field is interfering with the sun's magnetic field at the glass sky level at 100 kilometers. And that's what's causing the auroras to happen. And um, yeah, so this is my theory about the Earth's magnetic field. It has an outer metal rind to it. And they have openings in the north and south that are covered over a continental plate which flattens out the holes. Thanks for watching.